Hello, people. Thanks again for watching. So we're at, um, I don't know how many videos, maybe seventh, seventh. And uh, today we're going to be looking at um, singular and plural and uh, other cases of, of that. And uh, but focusing on the word people. So let's just move this in to view. Let's not get too proud of ourselves as a species. Today the word people is blindly overused and unless it refers to a population means very little. And I will also read from my other document uh, on how we overuse the word people and how we may avoid it. Not unlike the word information, which will be the subject of another video again. Um, what does information actually mean anyway? We'll get that to that in, in another video, as I say. So people comes from the, the French uh, countable noun peuple, meaning a people. And so, in fact, it is at its root a single noun, a singular noun. Besides, when we talk about a people or people, we mean a tribe, folk, um, society as a whole. And we're going to look into the, the um, psychological use of the word people. But to illustrate that people is not solely plural, um, have a look at this chart. So we talk about a free people, a whole people, a great people, a civilized people, a conquered people, a peculiar people, a barbarous people, a scattered people, and a willing people. Now, this aspect is not dealt with in mainstream course books. And then we have the use of um, people, like American people, English people, where the the article can be used or not. There shouldn't be much debate over whether to use the or not. Um, but go to my other video on the definite article about that. So, let's go over to the other piece of writing I wrote. And uh, at the alternatives for people. So, as I mentioned, it's generally becomes meaningless, overused, annoying, rather, rather redundant. My advice, therefore, is to avoid using people wherever possible um, whether in speaking or in writing why first of all people comes from pub as i mentioned and okay okay it's used in different ways in english um, but really there's no reason to use people we can use it um, we can use other things or even avoid it altogether. So I'll get to that in a moment. We use it for contexts such as populations, citizens, tribes, etc., where it is generally singular. And unlike what we hear in language classes, may actually be pluralized. Peoples. So and that's not just restricted to advanced learners or speakers. Uh, although you may think that you are trying to sound friendlier, um, it can also become annoying as it tends to carry overtones of persuasiveness while labeling everyone of something or other. 
I also hear generalizations like most people and many people. Uh, but what does that actually say? So people, if not overused or redundant, actually is a lazy word, as it, uh, as is the superlative uh, most, and so on. Many. Um, and more even. Why is it considered redundant? Well, sometimes you can just use the determiner those. And so in, in the statement, uh, with the people responsible for the event, uh, just replace people with those. With those responsible for the event. We know we're talking about humans, I hope. Alternatively, write the organizers of the event. Depending on the context you're writing or speaking about, there is actually a wide range of choice alternatives. In a business context, for instance, you can replace people with personnel, staff, the team, co-workers, etc. The word itself comes from the French, as I mentioned and evokes population so it's usually too informal a word and is vague or lazy use precise words like youngsters adults teenagers citizens and so on or then um, again and again you can leave it out altogether so many were disappointed about except that many itself is also a generalization I would not I would consider rephrasing the bottom line is unless we are distinguishing the animal kingdom from humans there's no need to specify people especially if we can say we or citizens denizens etc here comes the exception And uh, if, if you don't have a diagram, it's because it's in the um, ebook uh, cloud. Okay, this is just a PDF. But here you go. The extract is um, from this image. The graph shows that the percentage of people who left the established churches has grown a lot since the 1970s. So here, people is used appropriately and effectively as the word and the graph illustrate a population in the context of uh, above it means citizens not belong belonging to any particular organized religious faith and so it is much simpler to say people so um, I agree if if it's a if you want to use people to be simple go ahead but don't overuse it and uh, yeah <sighs> try not to sell your ideas just by using people okay so more other than not however the use of people is overly used and redundant I'm repeating this because it's important Bearing in mind that context is everything, there are other alternatives we can use as generic pronouns, demonstrative adjectives, uh, other words, other nouns to describe people, or nothing at all, which we'll get to in a moment. Possessives, objective pronouns, um, reflexive save ourselves from the dangers of I don't know redundancies um, it is inclusive rather than exclusive superlative um, most and as I say maybe there are better ways uh, than using most of us okay nominalized adjectives such as the rich the poor the the wealthy, the, the elderly, and so on. Avoid people here. <laughs> uh, if necessary. Um, and here, English people, the English. So if you're saying 
people, then you're going to want to use the, probably. Um, others will disagree. Don't say the Germans. You know. Don't mention the Germans. <laughs> but uh, I think that's okay. I don't see why not. The means significant, prominent, um, you know, major. If people can be left out of your sentence, then do so. Very often it's understood anyway from the context. And unless you're making a comparison to some animal species, it's redundant. Finally, and we're going to look actually in another video later on redundancy and the difference between that and pleonasm. We can argue that people is pleonastic, uh, pleonastic, anyway. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, you know, it's not about rules of uh, its use or not. It's more about style and uh, eloquence and getting the message across more precisely in this case. Finally, I know you may argue that we sound friendlier, uh, but it also sounds annoying to repeat it all the time because you can come across as being snobbish, pompous, if not exclusive. You know, it's like when we use the word they all the time, they, they, the government, they, we're all in it together. Well, welcome aboard. The bottom line is that people um, does not ex exclude you. And similarly saying, well, there we go. <laughs> saying they and them um, makes you uh, excluded from, from the reality. Yeah? Okay. Um, so other terms we might use is sentient beings, sentience, human beings, humans, etc. So for more about that, there's a post on Quora in my blog. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for another uh, video. I have uh, I mentioned that I have different topics coming up. Thanks for watching.